Hi, hello. Welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is September the 9th, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. We'll say I'm a little sleepy on this, what, Saturday morning. Uh, I've already kind of been pretty active. I, um, well, we had a good night, but I'll get to that. But I what did I what did I do? I woke up. You uh, went for a walk. We're still walking. That's right. It's still happening, and uh, you know, doing a little workout. So yeah, I'm I'm still asleep. Plus I woke I woke up early, like I like I often do. Um, but yeah, last night about last night it was fun. I had a good uh, work day. Like uh, like I already had stated in the last episode. Of course, we talked about that. But uh, after you know, I did the podcast. I wound up going out with my friends. I say going out, but really it was all went to a bowling alley. They bowled. I just really wasn't feeling it this time. I, I've had this like little bit of a breakdown on why my uh, bowling group were all a bunch of fun guys we, and, and gals. Everybody was chilling when we go bowl, when we get the urge. But I've just realized over time that like, I'm definitely not the one, like I'm not the good bowler of the group, you know, and, and this is generally a, a, around anything I've applied myself to. I'm mediocre to bad on, on, you know, insert thing here. And I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. I've embraced that. But I've just kind of realized like, ugh, I don't want to get sweaty after taking a shower. I'm really just hungry and kind of just want to eat and drink. Like we can just socialize. And so I was like, yeah, let's just socialize. Let's just do that. So it was nice to see all my friends. It, it had been a while since we had all kind of linked up. So I felt like one of those Avengers moments, you know, like, yeah, everybody's together. Let's go. So it was good. It was fun. The vibes are nice and tight. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mentioned eating. So let's just go ahead and go into the food corner. Nice and easy like. I got some pretzel sticks. My favorite little appy. Uh, pretzel sticks and cheese and mustard. It all hit very well. It was all very yummy. I was very satisfied. And then also, I grazed some food off of my friends. Uh, they had some uh, buffalo chicken, and so that was yummy. I had a little couple of them blah, 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 uh, with the ranch, with the ranch. And yeah, so that's it. That's that. That was fun. It was a good time. Uh, it was nice to watch my friends, you know, hit some strikes, hit some gutters, you know, make some spares along the way. Uh, let's let's go ahead and get into some news, though. You know, hopefully, while you're here, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, uh, almost made a boo boo. <laughs> Click the wrong button. All right, let me go ahead and actually do my typical startup. Do do do. All right, we can get into some news from the Associated Press. Powerful quake in Morocco kills more than 1,000 people and damages historic buildings in Marrakech. More than 1,000 people have been killed and more than 1,200 injured in an earthquake near Marrakech that flattened homes and devastated mountain villages. Uh, the Interior Ministry said Saturday afternoon that the death toll had reached uh, 1,037 with uh, 1,204,000 um, people, or 1,204, let me just say that that way, correctly, uh, were injured, and then 721 of them were injured, they were critically injured. The casualty toll was expected to climb as rescuers reached remote areas and dug through rubble for uh, survivors or bodies. Oh, let's see. I believe the earthquake was a 6.8. Um, and, like, I think just the structure of um, Marrakesh is kind of not conducive to the situation, which is sadly just something we talk about. But usually that's why the death toll winds up getting so high is because there's just like these perfect storm kind of culmination. And then an earthquake finally happens and... Everything just goes to shit. But I wanted to read this quote from Bill McGuire, who is a professor of Emetrius of Geophysical and Climate Hazards at the University of London. 
The problem is that where constructive earthquake or where destructive earthquakes are rare, buildings are simply not constructed robust robustly enough to cope with strong ground shaking. So many collapse resulting in high casualties. I would expect the final death toll to climb into the thousands once more is known. As with any big quake, aftershocks are likely, which will lead to further casualties and hinder search and rescue. Now, a lot of people have been, you know, you know, mobilizing already. Uh, this took place Friday, um, but uh, you know, it's it's still a lot happening. It's still a lot going on. There's, you know, so a lot of updates. Uh, let's see here. There's something else I think I wanted to pull. Maybe yes. Uh, the epicenter, the epicenter of Friday's tremor was near the town of Ighil in Alhus province, roughly 70 kilometers or 43.5 miles south of Marrakesh. Alhus is known for scenic va- uh, villages and valleys tucked in high in the high atlas and village villages built into mountainsides. So yeah, I mean, it's just obviously, you know, very unfortunate. As I was doing research for this into the next thing that we're going to cover, I heard too that there was another earthquake in Mexico. Uh, There, I think it was like a 5.5 or something like that. It wasn't as big, but still an earthquake, still very damaging. You know, uh, you know, nature's crazy, just very active. You you can just be doing your shit, minding your own fucking business, but on the other side of the planet, you know, it just can feel like Armageddon and vice versa. Um, but um, yeah, let's go ahead. And, uh, speaking of Mexico, let's go ahead and segue along. Mexico decriminalizes abortion, extending Latin America Latin American trend of widening access to procedure. Mexico Supreme Court threw out all federal criminal penalties for abortion Wednesday ruling that national laws prohibiting the procedure are unconstitutional and violate women's rights in a sweeping decision that extended Latin Americans' trend of widening abortion access. The high court ordered that abortion be removed from the federal penal code. The ruling will require the federal public health service and all federal health institutions to offer abortion to anyone who requests it. No, per- no woman or pregnant person nor any health worker will be able to be punished for abortion. The information group for chosen reproduction, known by its Spanish initials, uh, uh, GIRE, or G-I-R-E, uh, said in a statement. Some 20 Mexican states, however, still criminalize abortions. Uh, while judges in those states will have to abide by the court's decision, Further legal work will be required to remove all penalties. So th- this is a very big, monumentous moment. So I definitely don't want to denote from that or take away from that at all. But it is, yet again, no no matter what side you are on this conversation, there's always going to be more work to be done. Um, because, one, there's just always going to be pushback. And in this situation, there there's going to be states, there's going to be judges who are going to go through these these pregnancies, these abortions with fine tooth combs and find whatever way they can to ding you to say that you are doing something criminal and it's going to have to then be sorted out and worked out. Um, you know, sadly, it's just, it's an ongoing struggle. It's an ongoing work. But I am very happy. Uh, this, this does make me very happy, <laughs> you know, just to throw my, you know, two cents there. Uh, you, you just love to see this kind of progress continue to blossom and grow and grow and grow. Um, it's nice that when you, you see the people on the streets, they've called this like a green wave, you know, just out with these bandanas really, you know, just supporting and being out and and saying what they feel in mass. And then to see that get all the way to the courts, all the way through the legal system. I do think that is a very refreshing thing. That is what I look for. You know, when I first got into, you know, current events and all this kind of shit, it's like, that's what I expected to see everywhere all the time. And it just wasn't. And it's very sad. But um, this is a very good snapshot to take. And I I hope that in America, even though I know that we're so 
fractured and divided and torn apart on this fucking issue. Uh, it seems in so many ways that we just take more steps backwards than forwards. I mean, like, literally, we're, we're still, like, we approved the methapristone pill, but now we're like, oh, well, we got to debate, like, the amounts and uses. I don't fucking know, man. Uh, like, it's just more extra news, but it's it's not forward. And I, I want to just see more forward, like, like what they're doing in Mexico. So uh, that was something I just wanted to get in here and talk about. Um, yeah, and we hit the notes here. We can move along. Got an update. Also, I was listening to, and I can I noticed that you can actually hear the dog. So sorry about that. If you can hear that, that's natural. I wish I had birds. Some po- podcasters have like birds, and and they're in and they're in a little cozy little shed. And I'm like, why can't I have that? I have yappy ass dogs. <sighs> Fuck me. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> from CNN, London police find and arrest fugitive terror suspect Daniel Calif. Officers from London's Metropolitan Police found and arrested Daniel Califf, the force announced Saturday, marking the end of a three-day manhunt for the terror suspect who escaped from prison on Wednesday. Metropolitan Police officers have arrested Daniel Califf, who escaped from HMP Wandsworth on Wednesday, 6th of September. Uh, He was apprehended just before 11 a.m. local time on Saturday in Cheswick, Cheswick area of West London, where search efforts were refocused earlier in the day. We would like to thank the public and media for their support throughout our investigation to locate Caliph, and we will provide a further update on his arrest in due course. So yeah, we talked about him literally yesterday. Uh, It was a three-day affair. Kind of what I expected to take. Like, usually I feel like these things get wrapped up pretty fast, unless they don't, and then it's like, oh, wow, really scary. But um, yeah, I mean, now he's right back in the legal system yet again, and it's probably going to be even worse for him. Uh, Dude was taking some killer selfies, though. I'll give him credit for that. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I, I'm well. We I'm not gonna say it's closed chapter because now I'm definitely gonna be interested in his trial. So any updates there, I'll probably do a little coverage on that. But yeah, more or less done. I don't think he's gonna be doing anything wild. <laughs> Another escape? Jeez, maybe. All right, we have one more thing to cover, and then I'll let you go. Do-ba-do-do. All right. This last one comes from the Associated Press as well. New Mexico governor issues order suspending the right to carry firearms in public across Albuquerque. New Mexico governor Michelle Lujan Grissom on Friday issued an emergency order suspending the right to carry firearms in public across Albuquerque and the surrounding county for at least 30 days in response to a spat of gun violence. The Democratic governor said she expects legal challenges, but was compelled to act because of recent shootings, including the death of an 11-year-old boy outside a minor league baseball stadium this week. I believe that was like a road rage rage incident where uh, the the mom or the the, the driver and the, the boy was hit, or the child. Yeah, Jesus fucking Christ just riddled with bullets like when i say this shit is a player versus player zone i, I don't lie to god when i'm talking about where i live america in general you know what i mean it's just wild um but that being said talking about wild this is pretty wild like and i say that because of just where we are at as a country like i don't think that this is going to do anything, but it is a major shock to the system in saying, hey, stop carrying guns in public. Like, you know, unless you're, you know, police officer or you're taking them to a place like a gun range and things like that. But if you are taking them in transit, um, you know, you're a normal civilian, you do have to have like a trigger lock and all that kind of shit, um, which definitely people are going to be up in arms about. So, yeah, even, uh, let's see, Albuquerque Police Chief Harold Medina said he won't enforce it. 
So he's like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to give a hoot about this law, this new little, little, little suspension. Um, and then let's see, Bernanillo County Sheriff John Allen said he is uneasy about it because it raises too many questions about constitutional rights. What about my rights? What about my rights to bear arms, brother? So look, um, you can't really get around that here. And that's why I'm like, yeah, this is a drop in the bucket. It doesn't do anything. Plus it's 30 days. So like, yeah, like you, you potentially give Albuquerque, New Mexico, a chance to breathe just to like decompress something. But what does that do in the long run? Because 30 days are up and now we're right back to the violence. You know, you haven't changed anything and how the laws are working. We haven't, fixed any of the problems any of the situational problems at hand so i don't think this is really doing anything by luan grisham but i do think it's a noble attempt i do think it is at least trying to prompt the question of like what can we do here because this is not working like clearly this is happening more and more and more and people are just dying and we need to come up with a solution do I think this is a solution, a 30-day suspension ban thing? No, I, I don't think so. But I think it's an effort, and I'm happy for a change to be talking about an effort to do something good to stop this shit, as opposed to just more and more murder and conservatives talking about locked doors and mental mental health, something that they don't give a flying fuck about. So, you know, pleasant change, if you will. All right, but that's all I have. That's it. Nice. Uh, let's see here. I do got a shill, though. Isaiah New. No. Uh, oh, gosh. Patreon.com says Isaiah News. That's where you go to give me some money. <laughs> I'll take that money. I will take it to the bank, baby. It would mean a lot. Uh, you also become a newsie, and I shout you out on um, the top of the month, and I plug your projects, whatever you're on, or, you know, whatever you'd like me to plug. Uh, it's like ad space. Look, look, Take me as like an audio billboard, if you will, once a month. So that's the thing. You can try that out. Let's see here. Freeways hit me up. Isaiah News 1. I'm just so excited to tell you about my Gmail. Isaiah News 1 at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, you can send feedback, whatever there, responses. You can do a little email text exchange. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, let's see here. I'm on all the socials. You can find me or the podcast there. Please subscribe to the YouTube. It does help. It does do something for me in a positive way. Thumbs up comments are great reviews are great please five stars max stars whatever they are available do that for me please and uh thank you so much for being my friend and thank you so much for tuning in <laughs> and hopefully i see you soon for some more good news i love you bye bye